Through today's warm up, I wanted you to first start by thinking about our sets of real numbers. So for question number one, I wanted you to place the following sets of numbers in the diagram to the right, indicating the appropriate subset or the relationship between all of the sets that were given. At the top of the diagram should have been your set of real numbers. And then the real numbers are broken down into the rational and irrational. From there, we're left with the whole numbers, natural, and integers. Now your set of integers are all the negative and positive whole numbers. Whole numbers start with zero and then all are all of the positive whole numbers. And your natural or counting numbers start with the number one. So next, to illustrate the appropriate subsets would be the integers. Then the whole. And last, your natural. Number two, which of the following represents a rational number? So if we take a look at each of the numbers, the square root of 81 is 9. That's a terminating decimal. Remember your rational numbers are your terminating or repeating. And then if I look at pi, pi is a non-terminating, um, non-repeating decimal. And then when it comes to radicals, the square roots of non-perfect squares are irrational. Those that you can take the square root of and get a whole number or an integer are rational, so that would be answer choice number one. So number two, which of the following represents an irrational? Zero is obviously terminating, square root of 100 is 10, which is terminating, and then two-thirds as a repeating decimal, or negative two-thirds, is negative 0.66 repeating. So the square root again of a non-perfect square, number four, is irrational. To review our last unit right before break, I wanted you to solve for x in uh, check. And to get rid of our radical symbol, we square both sides. We end up with x equals 1, as 1 times 1 is 1, or 1 squared. And then to check, I substitute, is the square root of 1 equal to 1, and 1 is equal to 1. That checks. Now number 5, when I square both sides, I end up with x equal to, well, negative 1 squared does mean negative 1 times negative 1, which is also a positive 1. But when I check that, so 1 worked here, is the square root of 1 equal to negative 1? No, the square root of 1 is a positive 1. That does not equal negative 1. Therefore, we reject this, and there's no solution.